Hello and welcome to Tonalist Painting with M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and welcome as well to Day 11 of 25 Days of Tonalism, Volume 2. Uh, the painting that we've done a study after today was by uh, Thomas Moran, and it was called The Borda Gardens, Mexico. That's Borda gardens Mexico and uh, we've done a few Thomas Moran's before and it will probably only ever be a few because Thomas Moran was not a technically a tonalist that said um, well what he was was a genius uh, I have to say and um, Some of his work is very tonal and tonal in nature, but he was also, he was really famous for doing huge vistas of places like in South America or the Grand Canyon. He would travel places and do these gigantic, gigantic paintings that were just stunningly beautiful. And he didn't share much, uh, well, what he shared in common with the tonalists was a, um, sometimes he would work in that vein of an intimate scene with tonal harmony. And in that way, uh, he could uh, yeah, some of his work could be counted with them. But really, he was much better known for the giant vistas and things, and uh, intricate detail and rendering. And um, he was so phenomenally good at it too. Uh, I can't say, um, you know, he was sometimes uh, Thomas Moran is um, put with the Hudson River School, but he was actually a bit younger than most of those guys. And he also remained popular while many of them uh, fell out of favor. So I think Thomas Moran was probably popular until the day he died. And his work is uh, magnificent. And um, really it sort of deserves to be in its own category. And uh, I'm a big admirer of Thomas Moran. Uh, not all of his work touches me or moves me, though. So, uh, And that's really the primary thing that attracts me to tonalism that it's about this extreme emotional content that uh, you get in tonalist paintings and the um, the goal of uh, creating a tonalist painting is usually to have some sort of visual poetry going on um, much more so than just a clever depiction of a scene not that you know I have to say that Thomas Moran he definitely transcended just mere cleverness but his work is also quite clever and um, you know he's uh, he's up there uh, if you were contrasting with the uh, Hudson River School guys of which he really did keep the torch going for them I mean uh, the people like Edwin uh, uh, was it Frederick Church and uh, oh gosh a bunch of names that are escaping me at the moment but um, of course uh, Albert Beardstadt uh, being the two uh, best known, but there's there's a few names that are escaping me, besides Church and Birdstadt. But um, in the heyday of uh, tonalism, you know, uh, you couldn't the uh, the Frederick Church uh, stuff was you know falling out of favor big time, and you could pick it up pretty cheap. Um, anyway. Uh, they're both amazing movements in art, and I, I love both of them dearly. However, uh, like I said a minute ago, the tonalism really um, moves me, and that's why I do tonalist work, because I'm also in interested in moving people um, in some way. You know, um, I'm just trying to convey uh, some sense of mystery and beauty that I feel when presented with certain um, qualities of nature. Now, speaking of that, um, yesterday I had to take a trip down to Auckland to take care of some business, and most of this whole last week was in preparation for that meeting. Uh, I've got someone who's going to be um, actually uh, working on selling my studies, uh, and they're in a very um, populated and uh, popular part of uh, Auckland, uh, which is the biggest city here in New Zealand by a long ways, I'd say population of Auckland's about 1 million or just over and the population of the entire country is 4.5 million so I always say one in four people live in Auckland <coughs> and that's because it's true it's a proper big city and uh, it's you know uh, I'm pretty excited hopefully uh, we'll see some uh, activity I, you know I 
the distress of this individual that um, I've had a background in business. I do know how to take care of business, but I count myself as a fine artist. And for that reason, I am primarily concerned with creating paintings that are fine. And um, I'm not uh, interested in pandering to commercial um, commercial aims or commercial goals. Uh, and I'm not putting artists down that do that. Everybody's got their own uh, reckoning to make with the universe. But uh, for my part, having been a commercial artist for... Um, I was a commercial illustrator for 13 years and uh, engaged in nothing but... Uh, using really my visual art for commerce, so much so that I ended up getting into doing um, music as a uh, creative outlet. And uh, I feel lucky that I got out of the um, commercial illustration gig with my soul intact and my reverence for art intact. And um, I, I basically am working for art history and it may or may not ever add up to anything, but I think it's important um, to know why you're working and who you're working for and to uh, make sure that, that all the work you create is measured against that standard. And in my case, it would be art history, and this is uh, what has informed my work. And uh, that's not like I try to ape people like uh, Moran or even Ines or anything like that. In fact, when I do these studies, I'm really just trying to learn from them. and. Um, uh, sometimes it helps my own work, sometimes it doesn't, but uh, I never set out to do a painting of my own uh, with the intention like, oh, I'm going to do an Ines thing here, or I'm going to do a Francis Murphy thing here. It's always um, interaction with the landscape um, that I've uh, generally, that I photographed, and um, the feeling or mood that I wish to, um, that it gives me, that I wish to amplify and pump up and uh, project and present to uh, the viewing uh, uh, public so that's my goals and they're pure in nature that said um, I generate paintings and it's good to sell them and um, so I do have to spend some time working on things like that and I'm not going to claim to give anyone um, that sort of advice here on uh, YouTube uh, because uh, I don't think I'm all that good at it, even though I've had a background in business and stuff. And the reason I'm not that good at it is because, you know, while I, I, I definitely um, like selling work and uh, I like having a representation and um, things like that, uh, I would do the work whether I had that or not. It's not a goal for me. It's not, uh, it's not informing what I do. And uh, that's again no diss on anyone that's coming from a different place but I've had uh, I've been in hell and I sold my soul and uh, I was I bought it back and I'm keeping it so anyway uh, funny enough uh, I took my uh, camera uh, with me uh, not to take pictures down in Auckland but uh, um, yeah, there was a there's these bit of wetlands uh, that you get on the trip down to Auckland and uh, many times I wanted to uh, capture some of the scenes I've seen there but uh, when we were driving down there was so much haze in the air and it was um, just not good light I said ah well let's not worry about it but funny enough um, coming back up we took a detour and I was very glad I had my camera because it was uh, definitely the golden hour and um, we we came across some very beautiful um, area of beach here in um, New Zealand in a, in a town called Waipu which is just a little south of Whangarei and it was just stunningly beautiful uh, and I uh, got some some pretty good reference quite inspiring and so I'm sure some paintings will be coming out of that and I always like to uh, kid people that you know if I wanted to make it huge here in uh, New Zealand I'd be painting the, uh, the the types of trees that grow on the beach here are called Puhutakawa and uh, they're incredible trees they're really beautiful uh, but they can be quite complicated and difficult to paint but um, New Zealand's known for its Puhutakawa uh, strewn beaches and the uh, rocks and things and um, I always say if I wanted to make it big I'd, I'd do big bright impressionist paintings of Puhutakawas on the beach and uh, there's a lot of artists out here that do and again, I'm not dissing them at all. In fact, I've painted Pahutakawas on the beach, but I've taken the tonalist approach, and uh, that's not really what's on here in um, Northland, New Zealand, and that's okay. I have my uh, my fans. 
uh, and I guess speaking of the museum show is still going on and it's been uh, well received and it's been a, a really good thing for me um, I uh, like I say I had this other opportunity that presented itself in Auckland and I've been uh, pursuing that and all of you can uh, keep a good thought for me and hopefully that'll be a good venue for my work and uh, uh, I can uh, move some studies out of there that would be awesome because you know we all as artists we like to sell our work in and for my part really it's not even so much about selling the work I just I want it up in people's homes I want them enjoying it this is a big part of what I do also I'm creating paintings that I want people to enjoy that I want people to live with and I want those paintings to be uh, part of their life and the fact is when someone purchases a painting from me it becomes their painting it's no longer mine you know I created it I'm the father and uh, but it's in their life it's part of their life it's part of their um, sphere um, from there on and it really becomes theirs and um, it's a it's a great thing and one of the reasons also that I'm not really into um, reproductions and stuff I mean it fine reproductions are fine and uh, I God knows I've had tons of reproductions up on the walls over the years uh, but um, in this era and I've talked about reproductions extensively here so I won't repeat myself all over again but uh, just for those of you that haven't heard anything I've said before about it you know it's just it seems to me in this era where everything is um, mechanical and mechanical re mechanical reproduction is so cheap and not only that but we're inundated and saturated with uh, a plethora of images on a daily basis uh, in the hundreds of thousands of images that get presented to us uh, if you're gonna have an image up in your home it should be the product of an artist's hand because if we're going to survive as human beings um, we need to put the emphasis on what we can do that is special and unique to each one of us as individuals uh, whether that's painting or carving or sculpting or uh, making music or whatever it is it, it should be we should all be putting the focus on that unique expression of ourselves and our lives as individuals and that will be the commerce of the future I'm sure of it whether I'll be alive to see any of that or not is, is debatable but I don't think it's debatable that human beings are going to have to end up there at some point and for that reason it doesn't make sense to make reproductions when uh, somebody could for just a little more money buy something that was original and actually have a piece of that artist in their home Anyway, I can see we're getting close to the end. Hey, thanks for joining me today. If you like my channel, uh, please click subscribe. I don't throw up any of those weird uh, pop-ups or anything because I don't want to disturb your uh, viewing experience. But I appreciate it when people subscribe and we're building up a nice uh, following. And, uh, and I'm here consistently for you. So I did. This should have been up yesterday, but I'm hoping to do two today. So uh, if not, uh, we'll see you next week. Otherwise, we'll see you again later today. Meanwhile, take good care and stay out of trouble.